Good afternoon. I'm going to describe the play activity plan, which is not due to be completed and turned in until December 3rd, but you will have two weeks in November where you have time to go and set up the activity and implement it and then document it and then come back and put together all of your documentation and so forth. So I wanted to make sure that um, you had plenty of time to plan for this um, play activity. So this is not a lesson plan. It has no achievement or standards related to it. It's specifically designed to help you as a teacher learn how to take everything we've talked about this semester, which is a lot about play. And so you might want to even review all of your notes that are so good. You guys have great notes. Go back and look at those and see what you might want to really reflect on and highlight when you go to submit this. Um, <clears throat> but first, before you can do the plan, you'll need to submit a proposal to me and I'll outline for you in the instructions and in, in the assignment list this week exactly what I need to know from you. Um, so, but for now, I really wanna just go over the plan itself and the detail about how you're to document things and so forth, because there are specific ways of documenting play. You've looked at Te Rahiki, you've looked at Reggio, you've looked at Montessori, you've looked at all these different ways children play, and then we try to figure out what are they getting from that so that we can maybe think of other kinds of play experiences we want them to have and plan for those. So, and by play experiences, I really mean play. So please keep that in mind that whatever you do will be held to that standard. So in order for you to actually go forward and implement this, um, you need to get it approved by me. I may send you feedback about some changes you need to make but um, or questions that I wonder if you've thought about. So um, please know that those will come and you need to resubmit if I do ask you questions or ask you to make adjustments. Once you get my approval, then you can go ahead and set up your activity plan wherever you plan to do it. If you work somewhere where you can do this and the kids know you really well, then of course that's ideal. Um, as long as you do have the required ability to really allow children, children to engage in uninterrupted play and um, to make sure it's student-directed play on the continuum, that your only role might be to ask some guiding questions, perhaps. Um, but that's the limitations of it in terms of teacher role. And so where you go where you plan to go, if it's where you've been observing, that would be really good because you at least know those children well enough because you've been observing them perhaps. Um, so that might be an option for you. I do not recommend you do this somewhere where you've never been and you don't know the children at all because one of the things it's gonna ask you right away is what, what do you know about these children that causes you to think this would be a great play experience for them. So consider this, the center where you're gonna go very carefully. Um, and you're going to be making a list of two simple features or schemas of play that you think you'll be able to observe and document because of the activity you're planning. So you can pick the schemas um, or features of play, however you wanna do it, ahead and then plan the act, play activity and say, I think if I do this, these are the schemas and features of play that I'll really see. Um, choose at least two to focus on. Um, and then the next thing you're going to do is list your materials and resources and where you plan to obtain them. And the where you plan to obtain them is part of the assignment. So make sure you have that covered. Um, materials and resources will also include how the materials and resources you need to document. How, what's your plan for making sure that you can document 
um, using photographs, samples of what kids create, depends on what you're doing. Um, your procedure is basically you're going to introduce how you'll present the materials to the children. If you need to, you may not need to. There, if you're going to do something really basic, like put sand and buckets and that kind of thing out and just observe what you observe, just whatever you've decided to look at, um, then that's all you need. But if there are safety instructions like scissors and that that kids need to be reminded of, make sure you include that um, in how you plan to uh, make sure kids are playing but that you've introduced the materials and any kind of safety needs around them. Um, number two is any guiding questions for children that you may think you might need. Have a few ready in case children, you know, it seems like maybe using some guiding questions as they're playing would be interesting. Um, remember that teacher involvement continuum. Um, also, your activity implementation plan, um, where and when will the materials for play be shared with the children. And um, remember this should be at least 30 uninterrupted minutes for children to be able to explore. So you wanna make sure when you plan your time to do this, that that's very clear that you need that to happen. Um, and then your closure is basically, how will you engage children in closing the activity? Um, will you talk to them about, are we leaving this up? Are we doing, you know, are we putting all this away? Or um, are there things we might wanna leave up to build on tomorrow, to do more with tomorrow? Are we saving materials over here to dry so that tomorrow we can get them back out again and use them? You know, there can be all kinds of ways that can um, be important but you need to plan for it. So that's really um, all, I, all we need there for closure. You are asked to look for at least two to three modifications. You can pick two or three of these. Um, you can look for kids in, in the um, documents that um, have been provided for you in the class. You can look for modifications that you might need we're looking at this as kids with lower play skills and high, and also for kids who have very high play skills and will be very, um, you'll need to have things there that are built in challenges perhaps. So how are you gonna cover that span? And are there needs for kids who are multilingual? Um, are there words and names for the things that you're putting out in their languages that need to be listed and considered. So you'll, you may have to do some research to learn how to say the names of things in whatever languages you know you have in the room. Um, even if the children seem very functional with English, you still need to find out what their mother language is and have at least three or four of the items that you're allowing for play have the have that um, vocabulary ready so that you can use it. It's really important. All right, so then your reflection on the implementation is two to four paragraphs. Here are the guiding questions that are referenced in the rubric that you should make sure you do. For your photo essay documentation portion of the assignment, I'm gonna go ahead and open up this PDF that I'll be sending to you to help you if you've not done this before. Maybe some of you have, which is great. So this is a play-based documentation um, PDF. It has lots of information, really good information. Um, and it talks about, you know, thinking of yourself as a play detective. It talks about what documentation really looks like when you're doing play documentation. It's different than if you're doing a checklist did they do this? Did they say the letter A or whatever? <laughs> this is not that kind of documentation or assessment. It's authentic and it's really looking at what kids did. If you do video and photos, which I recommend, you can only do like their hands working with something, no faces, and you can do them from the back if you, if you need to, but there should be nothing in the um, process that 
makes the child identifiable. Um, and then you translate conversations into writing. Um, you could do one child's experiences for a chunk of the time and look at that in addition to all the above. So you may be taking photos because you won't have actual work samples to bring with you. Um, so let's keep going. Why should you document? I think we've talked about that in class, how you should document. Again, these are various ways teachers do documentation. In this case, you're doing what's called a panel or a photo video documentation. So this and this are what you're doing. Um, we're not going to do any of the others. You, you can put notes on post-its if it helps you remember conversations, but um, you won't be turning those in. All right, um, let's go on then. And here are some of the things it tells you to do. Um, these are all kinds of things you can do. You could learn to do after you've done this. Um, and again, the documentation. But here's the photos and videos. I would skip down to this page. This is page 13. Um, it has information. It has information about panels and displays. You may have seen these in space, especially if you've been to the ELC. They use panels and displays and they use photos and videos. Um, I, you cannot, well, you can use video if you want, but again, it's the same thing. You need to be sure that um, there's no identifiable children in those. These are not available to us, but they are really cool. And I thought I would just show them to you. So basically you're looking at page 13 for, for these photos and videos and panels and displays, because you're going to make a really simple little document that shares photos and stories and quotes and that sort of thing from your documentation process. Here again, we're talking about these two processes for documentation. And again, if you go all the way back to, um, here we have taking videos, work samples, child dictation. That means what did the child say? Um, and then sharing those conversations and what children said. You could choose as during the 30 minutes to isolate and just focus on one child and write down everything they do and say. Um, you could do that with several children if you wanted and make that your documentation. So basically um, just remembering that we're documenting what children do and we're not looking for anything in particular. You could put in the documentation, you know, that whatever the schemas of play or features of play that you were looking at, you could say, here's an example of this, here's an example of that that I noticed um, that would be helpful and useful. But have fun with it because it's it can be really fun to revisit everything. And this will be the part you will do after you do the activity before you submit. That's why I'm giving you this whole month um, to look at this. So I hope that is helpful for now. I'm just gonna go back to the document and then look at you can see the rubric. Basically, it's everything connected to what you're doing here. I'm hoping it's very clear. If you really um, dive into this, you should have no problem at all. But if you have any questions, let me know. You can see this is all based on what I just said you would be doing. Um, and if you, for some reason, um, do this and you haven't had it approved, um, it will be problematic for you. So please um, make sure this is approved so that um, you are able to get the best score possible that you can. Hope that makes sense. All right, thank you.